Father, uh, we do thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives. We thank you for this time this morning. And I pray, God, that as we get into your word, as we look at John communicating with that, that church a couple millenniums ago, I pray that once again these words wouldn't just be historical words or things that we read, but Lord, they would be you speaking to our hearts. God, we want to change. We want to be more like you. We want to rightly represent you. That's why we're here today. So I pray that, again, you would open up our minds, open up our hearts, and that we could leave here today different than when we came in, that we would be rejoicing on our way out about what you've done in our lives. So I pray that you would bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, as we're looking at John, John has been spending <clears throat> quite a bit of time. He's dealing with some false teaching, and he's been spending time kind of talking about morality and who we are and righteousness, and we've been looking at that. What does it mean to be a Christian from that perspective? And he's kind of been focused on that. Now, he's going to shift a little bit. It's still about false teaching, but now he's going to talk about in our Christianity that our Christian life should also affect relationships. And in relationships, we need to have an understanding. So John is going to kind of push this. And once again, John is black and white. It blows my mind this time studying the book of 1 John for me, how black and white John gets. He, you know, he starts out, you're either righteous or you're unrighteous, period. There's no in between. Now he's going to say, you either love or you hate, one or the other. And you have to make a decision what you're going to do. And you've got to allow the Spirit to work in you. So he's really going to challenge us. And, and my prayer is that we would all listen. And, and once again, it's like sometimes topics like this, we like to either nudge our spouse and let them know they're not doing things right. Or at times like this, we kind of think, man, I wish so-and-so was here to hear this. If you're doing that today, you're in serious trouble because John is going to bust you out. This is for those who are here, right? So he left off last time. When we, when we finished up verse 10, he said, listen, he says, uh, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. And then he says this, nor is he who does not love his brother. Then verse 11 says, for this is a message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So the message, listen, this is like the third or fourth time he's brought up, this is what you heard from the beginning. Now, he's not talking about the beginning of creation. He's talking about the beginning of this journey that we have with Jesus. When Jesus came and ministered and was here, this is what he talked about. You've heard this all along. And didn't Jesus spend more time telling us about loving each other and being involved in each other? And he says, this is what you've heard. Now, it's one thing to heard it, and it's another thing to do it, right? Hey, you heard it, but is it impacting your life? And so that's a challenge that John has for us this morning. It's not enough just to say, yes, I've heard that. And it's not even enough just to say, yes, I believe that. This needs to be something that is real in your life, that is being expressed as a believer. And so the big challenge he's going to give us is, is this true or not? Is this going on in your life or not? So as he does this, listen, now he goes into, and it's still part of the same sentence, but he goes into verse 12, and, and listen, he says that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. So now, listen, he's saying, we need to love one another. And then he goes, but you can't be like Cain, and a lot of us know the Cain and Abel story, but I want us to notice something here, and we'll come back to this when we, when we kind of wrap up this section. But listen what he says. He says, not as Cain who was of the wicked one. Oh, that's interesting to me to think about. You got Cain and Abel. So let's go, let's think about it a little bit. Let's go to Genesis chapter four and kind of look at that story. A lot of us are familiar with it and we kind of know it. If you've been doing your Bible reading, you just read this again, uh, going through it. But listen, as we do this, here's the thing that's kind of mind blowing. Verse one in chapter four, in Genesis chapter four says, now Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. 
Then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. So we get introduced to these two, and something I want us to notice, they have the same parents. Some of you are going like, duh. They have the same parents. They have the same uh, environment that's affecting their lives. There are not a whole lot of people, not a whole lot of influence going on. And you have these two brothers, but they're radically different. And not so much different in what they're doing, but different in who they are. Now, the Bible tells us, listen, gives us a little bit of insight. One, one's a farmer and one's a rancher. We can put it in today's terms. Now, what sort of blows my mind is there are some people who say God does not like farmers because of this passage. And I always think that's like a bad conclusion. I don't know where you come up with that. It's bad theology and it just doesn't say that. It's telling us they're different. And it's okay to be different. But then, listen, something happens to these two brothers. And I think it's important for us to kind of recognize that. Like, if you grew up with siblings, you know that there's this sibling rivalry stuff that goes on, right? You beat each other up, you do things, you, you know, and, and that's kind of, but it usually doesn't go much further. Like, you usually don't like try and kill your brother normally. I thought about it once, very seriously, but. So, listen, you have these two brothers that are growing, and here's the thing, they knew what they were supposed to do. They both knew God had communicated to the family, this is how you worship. And I think that's important we understand that. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, they did the fig leaf thing, that didn't work out real well. God slaughtered a lamb, a sheep, and made clothes for them, letting them know that sin always costs. And we need to understand that sin always, always costs. So God demonstrated that, and somehow I believe God had communicated, and we're going to look at that in a minute, how you come to him. So you have one that's a rancher, one that's a farmer, and then it says in verse 3, and in the process of time, <clears throat> it came to pass that Cain, <clears throat> excuse me, brought an offering of, fruit, of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Now that in and of itself doesn't sound bad, unless... God had communicated how you're to come to him. When I look at Cain, here's what I see. Somebody that's gonna worship God his way and make up his mind how he's gonna come to God. And the people that do that are usually very narcissistic, very self-centered, and they're focused on self, and they don't care what anybody says, they don't care about anything, all they care about is myself. And I'm gonna bring, listen, I'm gonna bring this. Well, God said to come a different way. I don't care what God said. Do you ever hear people say, well, you know, you go to church and stuff, but I worship God my way? Not good. It's never good. Never good when people do that. As a matter of fact, there was a, there was a you know, when Israel had the, the civil war and 10 tribes went to the north and two tribes stayed to the south, the 10 tribes who went to the north what did they decide? You're gonna read that later on if you're doing your Bible reading. And if, you, if you're not familiar with that, read First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles for homework today, and, you, and you'll be fine. But listen, as they, as they do that, when they went to the north, what happened? They worshiped God their way. And they got messed up. They got thoroughly messed up. And so Cain says, I'm gonna come my way, so he brought the fruit of the ground. Once again, doesn't mean that that's bad stuff, it means he came in the wrong way. And then, listen, then it says, and Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So listen, he came his own way, and God says, that's not right. Here's something I found with narcissistic people. The minute you say no to them, it's over. And that's what God said. No, this is not right. Have you ever noticed that? Have you, have you dealt with those kind of people? The minute you say no, it all falls apart. And he just said, listen, the Lord just said no to Cain. And what did Cain do? He got very angry and his countenance fell. 
It changed how he looked at everything. Now, here's what I believe. The offering and what they went through didn't, didn't, wasn't the thing that changed Cain. It's the thing that revealed who Cain was. In 1 John, it says, he was of the evil one. Here we see that manifested by his reaction to what happens. And I think that's important for us to understand to maybe look at our own lives. So his countenance fell and he became very angry. Now, what really blows my mind is how gracious our God is. It always cracks me up. People say, you know, the God of the Old Testament was really mean and angry. And then the God of the New Testament, once he had his son, he would chilled out a little bit and got nicer. Whenever I hear that, he, you know, it just like blows my mind. Number one, the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. And even in the Old Testament, I think he's even a little bit more gracious. Cain gets mad, gets angry, his countenance fell. Now, I believe God knows everything. I believe he knows the beginning from the end. He knows what we're going to do. He knows all the things we could do, all the possibilities. And listen, he knows, he knows what's going to happen. And look how he reaches out to Cain. This is what really blows my mind. It says, so the Lord, in verse 6, so the Lord God said, or the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? Number one, have you ever noticed when you start blowing it, the Holy Spirit makes that evident to you? Have you ever noticed, you always like, why are you doing that? I always, in my mind, here's what I hear, Patrick, why are you doing that? Never calls me Pat when I'm doing something wrong. It's always the formal term. Listen, and here's what he says, Cain, what's up? Why are you angry? Isn't that a good God? Why are you angry? Why is your counting? Why did this happen? In other words, listen, God's not curious. God's wanting Cain to come to realize what's going on in his heart and in his life. What's going on? Just like when he asked Adam, where are you? He wasn't saying, Adam, I lost you. I don't know where you're at in the garden. He's saying, what on earth is going on in your heart? So same thing. Cain, what's going on? And then here's, here's what really blows my mind. In verse 7, here's what he says. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Here's what he says. Cain, do the right thing. And you'll be accepted. You know what I hear? Grace. Come on, Cain. You don't want to go there. You don't want to do that. Do the right thing right now. Do the right thing. Change. And he says, so if you do well, you'll be accepted. And, verse, obviously, verse, or continuing verse 7, and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and it's, it's, it's desirous for you, but you should rule over it. Cain, you can come out on top. Don't let this get you. I believe if you've walked with the Lord any amount of time, you've experienced the same thing. As you walk and as you go in certain directions, God is always like tugging on us, right? Come on, come on. And some of us, some of us, we have hill tracks all the way in our walk with the Lord because he's dragging us along, kind of pulling us in there. I want to be that person that I'm willingly walking and I'm willingly going. So he says, Cain, get it together. Now, most of us know, right, it's not a good ending, and verse 8, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. Man, it's like that, isn't it? It seems like man, they, God just reached out to him and Cain, no, I want to do it my own way. So back to John, listen, go back to John now, and John tells us, listen, number one, he was of the wicked one. Jesus Jesus, in John chapter 8, Jesus says this to the religious leaders. He says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Listen, Jesus already talked about, and here's what's going on. Cain, you're not a child of God. You're a child of the evil one. And now that's being manifested in your life. 
And you and I need to understand that, and we need to realize that you can't, listen, you can't have a foot in both worlds. It doesn't work. So he tells Cain, or John, or John spells that out, but listen, and then he says, and he murdered his brother. When he uses that word murder, it's like he slaughtered him. It's a very, very specific term in the original language, like he grabbed him and cut his throat. Kind of a gross, gross uh, murdering of somebody, killing of somebody. Cain did that. And then why did Cain do that? And the end of the verse, look, it says because, and why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Oh. Whenever the church reveals righteousness, simultaneously it will reveal evil. And as Abel righteously went before the Lord, that magnified the evil of Cain, and Cain couldn't stand it. So Cain murdered him, slaughtered him. So John gives us that, that thing. So here's the difference. You're either, and that's just kind of, you're either of Cain or Abel. And then John says this in verse 13. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now, you know, some of you might think he's talking about love and love, and then all of a sudden he throws this in, and it's kind of out of nowhere. No, it's not. What did he just say? He just said that Cain killed Abel because Abel's actions were righteous. And then he says this, church, Christian, you need to know something. The world's not going to accept you. The world, when you are living as a Christian, the world's not going to embrace you. And again, it still blows my mind that so many times I hear people say, I can't believe that people aren't accepting what I'm doing. You're, if you're a believer, the world's not going to accept it. We should realize that. And we should be people that we understand. Listen, the, world, the world's going to hate us, especially when we're demonstrating and walking with the Lord in a right way. The world's not going to be very pleased. John Wesley, an old dead guy, was like, like John Wesley in my mind and the stuff I read about him, he like had to be one incredible individual. He would, he would share and preach messages up to five to 10 times a day, riding on horseback, going from city to city to city. And he was just like a lean, mean preaching machine and he would just go and go and go and you'd think, why, how does that happen? And Wesley one day was riding along and he realized that he hadn't been persecuted in three or four days. And he got bummed out. Not like us in America. And he got all bummed out and he started crying out to the Lord, Lord, I must be doing something wrong. The world isn't coming against me. I haven't been persecuted. And all of a sudden a brick, and he goes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and he felt good about it. See, we would whine, wouldn't we? Come on. Someone threw a brick at us, hit us. We would, ah, yeah, I'd be persecuted. How horrible. Wesley's like rejoicing in the Lord that he's doing something right. So this tells me if the world is embracing us, maybe we're doing something wrong. We need to question. Several years ago, it's been, it's been a while now, I used to go to one restaurant quite a bit, and there was a waiter there that I would share with all the time, and trying to, trying to drag him into the kingdom and share with him, and, and I thought I had a good, I thought I had a pretty good testimony with him. Well, then he decided he was going to open a nightclub, and he even came and looked at our church building for plans. Kind of weird, but... And then he's getting ready to open a nightclub and he finally gets a place and gets ready to open it and here's what happened. He comes to me and he says, hey Pat, I would really like for you to come to the soft opening. I'm going, it's a nightclub. Like I don't, I don't like frequent nightclubs. Just so you guys know. And he says, hey, why don't you come? And I thought, and my, the whole time I'm thinking, is my witness so weak that he thinks I want to go to a club? Or is our relationship so good that he just wants me to be there 
to support him. I never did ask him. I didn't, by the way, I didn't go to the soft opening, just so you know. And, uh, but I, here's the thing. I think we should always question ourselves. I was really questioning my witness. Is my witness good or is it bad enough that somebody would think I would like to hang out in a club, you know, in the evening? So I think that's important that we understand. And here's what he's saying. Does the world love you? Now, I would like to tell you all that he got saved and, you know, everything got transformed and da-da-da, but it didn't. It didn't work that way. And I still, to this day, don't know why he invited me. I never did ask, why are you asking me to come to your club? I did say, uh, I would say his name, but I don't want you to know it. I did say, hey, what's your face? I said, do you really think I want to come to a club? And he did say, probably not, but I want to invite you. So maybe it was good. But listen, do you get my point? The world should not be embracing us. Now, listen, having said that, it shouldn't be rejecting us because we're jerks, right? Don't be a jerk for Jesus and then blame it on him because there's way too many jerks for Jesus. Jesus doesn't need any more jerks. And the Holy Spirit doesn't need any help convicting people, just so you know. He's not, like put it, he's not leaving and retiring and putting you in his place. So, but it should be our lifestyle. It should be who we are, the way we conduct ourselves, the things we say, the way we present ourselves. And so he says, listen, don't be surprised. He says, don't marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now, verse 14, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. So here's what he's letting us know. We can know, here's what he's saying. You can know whether you're born again or not. You can know whether you've passed from death to life. How can you know that? Because there's a change in you. I believe, listen, I think too many people like, like think they can, quote, say a prayer and everything's fine and nothing in their life changes. That's not the biblical definition of salvation or born again. You're changed. Now listen, it doesn't mean that you start loving people so you can go from death to life, just like we talked about righteousness. Because you've gone from death to life, you change your heart and your attitude toward others. That's what he's saying. Because that's happened, it's a consequence. Listen, it's not, it's not the reason it's the consequence. I have been born again. I can love people. Now, that doesn't mean, listen, that doesn't mean you're going to love every single person, you know, that you come in contact with. And it's not talking about romantic, gushy, mushy love. Sometimes love has to be brutally honest, doesn't it? But he's saying, you know, listen, you know, because all of a sudden, you care about people. You care about individuals. You care about what's going on in their life. You care about where they're going to end up. You're concerned. And he says, so we can know. If you're, if you're a Bible underliner, underline that word, no. You can know that you've gone from death to life because you love others. Isn't the fruit of the Spirit love? And then I think the other things, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, I think all of that defines love. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So he says, listen, we can know that we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. And then he says this, whoever does not love his brethren or his brother or his, abides in death. Oh. Saints, you can't hold a grudge. You can't be that person that you're mad at, a brother in the Lord. You can't, you can't change churches because you're mad at somebody. You can't change services. I'm not going to that service anymore. The jerk is there. Here's what he says, and you're still dead. That's scary, isn't it? Again, John's black and white. He's not giving us any middle ground, is he? He's not giving us a place where we can say, oh, no, you know, I'll do. he's saying, listen, it's either this or this, you choose. Are you loving people? Then you're in life. Are you hating people? Then you're still dead. And you need to understand that. And you need to probably do something about that and think through that and let that impact your life. I believe, listen, I believe, I believe just these, you know, especially verse 11, verse 14, are something that we need to really focus on in our hearts. You can't change it 
Only God can change it. But you can recognize it in your life. You can find out where you're at. And I think, listen, we need to do that. And then he says this, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Oh, now we're back to Cain and Abel, right? If I'm not loving you, I'm hating you, and now I'm murdering you. And hate only destroys you. I've quoted this before. One of my favorite quotes is from Richard Nixon, of all people. It's good to quote him with this. Listen to this quote. Others may hate you, but they never win. Unless you hate them back, then you destroy yourself. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? Pretty powerful, especially when you consider what was happened in his life. But just, it's a powerful thing to live by. I know when I start getting angry with people and upset with people, and yes, I do that. I know most of you saints don't do that, but I do that. And when I start getting upset and angry with people, I always try and bring it back to, man, listen, I can't let it go further than this. I've got to stop it. And I begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fix my heart and fix my attitude and fix what's going on. A lot of times we want God to fix the other person and he's saying, I'm trying to work on you right now. And we need to say, man, we need to yield our hearts to him. And he says, listen, man, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And then he says this, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Woo, man, that's a little intense, isn't it? Do you know that when we refuse to function as born again, that we're going against everything we are by nature? Because we've been born again. And here's what he's saying, man. When you, when you hate somebody and you murder them, you need to know that eternal life's not abiding in you at that moment. Doesn't mean it's never abiding in you. I believe, listen, I believe murders, physical murders, can repent and go to heaven. Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. Some of you not so sure, it's okay. That means you're pretty self-righteous and you need to deal with that. (laughs) But I believe, listen, I believe they can. I believe they can do that. I believe also, as believers, we can get in a place where, where we get angry and we do get to that place, and and even to a place maybe where we sever a relationship that shouldn't have been severed. At that point, here's what John is saying. Eternal life's not abiding in you, and you need to recognize that, and you need to confess that. Remember, this whole letter is about being cleansed and dealing with sin and being upfront about sin. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, right? So you just, you got to deal with it. But here's the thing. So many times we don't deal with it. And we let these things build up. In my family, my dad's side of my family, the Serbian side. Serbians can be pretty mean people. And I've seen in my family, my family cut people out of the family. I don't know if you've experienced that. They literally, you are dead to us. You're out of the family. That's frightening to me. Well, that's what we do when we hate somebody. We cut them out. Oh, maybe we verbally don't tell everybody they're cut out, but in our minds, in our hearts, they're cut. They're as good as dead. And we need to know that, and we need to be honest about that. And we need to be people, I'm not gonna live that way. I watched my family do things, and I decided long ago, I am not gonna live that way. I'm not, even before I was born again, I don't wanna be that kind of person that just like annihilates other people in my heart and in my mind. I don't wanna do that. And especially as a believer. Now, do people still bug me? Yeah, none of you. Sure, because people are people. And here's what I know, I bug people. I know that too, we get on each other's nerves, we can do that. But do you hear what John is saying? We're bigger than that. We're greater than that. And we need to understand 
This thing about love isn't just, isn't just pie in the sky, isn't just something. It's a reality in the way we interact with each other. And if the church were really the church and we didn't get in these, these little tiffs and do things, do you know how effective we would be in the world? The world would be blown away. The world wouldn't like us, but it would be blown away by what we do. Saints, let's decide we're gonna be believers. I wanna be, I wanna be on God's side because I have read the end of the Bible and he wins. Just FYI. If you're on the other side this morning, you might change sides. I have read the end, he wins. Every time he wins, every year when I read through the Bible, he wins. He never loses, never even comes close. So I wanna be on that side. But even greater than that, and I think, listen, I think if you're here this morning, you feel the same way, you wanna leave a good testimony. You wanna leave something behind greater than you. So saints, let's be saints. And let's love one another. You have heard this from the beginning. Jesus said, by this, the world will know that you're my disciples. By how much you bicker and fight and moan and groan and complain. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it the next time you want to really like, me, 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 me. He says, how? By the love that you have for one another. Let's remember that. Let's stand up and pray. Father, I thank you this morning. We can read these verses and Lord kind of meditate on them a little bit. But God, they need to be in our hearts. We need to be a people who we flesh these things out. They become reality in our lives. And as a people, Lord, that we would honor and glorify you. And that begins with each individual. And maybe, maybe a lot of this was just for me and my heart and my attitude. But Lord, I know that your desire is that we would be... a a people, a, a tribe, if you will, who truly expresses this biblical character of love. We would not allow little petty things to get in the way. Even if somebody rebukes us, we would know that that's coming from love. And we would have that understanding, God, and that we could glorify you with these lives that you've given us that as we walk through this world, that God, we would bring you honor. Thank you, God, for loving us unconditionally. And I pray that we could express that to others. And I'm gonna ask you to stay in an attitude of prayer for just a couple more minutes. And if you are here today and you've never asked Jesus to forgive your sins, you've never asked him to come into your life Today is the day to do that. And it's a pretty simple process. You have to come to the place where you recognize you're a sinner, which I don't think is hard. I think all of us know we've sinned. But you gotta admit that to God. Not that he needs to know, but he needs to know, or you need to know you've sinned. Admit that you're a sinner, and then have that understanding that your sin is against a holy and righteous and perfect God. And because you've sinned, you deserve his wrath. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That means you deserve the wrath of God. That's bad news. The good news is Jesus Christ came and died on the cross and he took that wrath upon himself. And he took what you deserve and he took it upon himself, and now for you, he has your receipt that says, paid in full. All you gotta do is take that. So I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. It's a way of taking that. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer, and you can say this prayer out loud. You can say it silently. The most important thing, it's gotta be sincere. It's gotta come from your heart. Maybe you're backslidden today. 
you know what, come home. Come back to Jesus. I like to say it this way. If you backslid, it's time to front slide. So come back. Give your heart. Come back to him. Say this prayer with us. If you're watching online, you can say it right at home. You don't need to be here in this building. You can say it at home. Jesus, today I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry that I sinned against you, God. And right now, I'm asking you to forgive me. Jesus, thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you today for your forgiveness. And right now, I'm asking you to come into my heart and change me. Jesus, come into my life and guide me. Today, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior.